Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today we're going to be talking about my new tapping head. As I mentioned uh, recently on my new shop video, I purchased a used tapping head off of eBay. This one's a Procuniere High Speed Tapping Attachment number 2E. It can handle uh, up to half inch in brass, up to 3 eighths inch in cast iron, and up to 5 sixteenths in steel. Today we're going to be doing some 5 sixteenths in aluminum, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, the benefits of tapping heads are that they allow you to tap multiple holes uh, much more quickly and uh, versus um, using, say, a hand tap, they will ensure the uh, alignment, the vertical alignment of the tap. It's a couple of differences, though. First of all, you want to be careful if you're using one of these with really small taps. I've not even tried it with a number eight or uh, or lower, number six, but um, the um, it's more likely to break a small tap because of the amount of torque these are used in. So be careful if you're tapping an expensive part. Make sure you test it first. Also, um, you know this is a tapping head tutorial for the home shop user, so. If you uh, are, you know, looking for expert advice, you'll need to do your own research. Um, my, you know, layman's research has indicated that uh, while a tapping head like this is going to work fine for me, if you are tapping a lot of a certain size, whether that's a larger or a smaller, you may need to purchase a tapping head which better uh, matches that uh, torque range that's appropriate for that size, or one which is adjustable. I bought this off eBay because a new tapping head from an industrial supplier runs anywhere from $500 to $800. Uh, I purchased this one used uh, for about $60 and it came with the collets. I've got the 5 16th inch, 16th inch tap inside there, but what, allow, what happens is there are collets, which I'll show you, that look a little bit different than any other type of collet I've seen. And what these do is allow you to fit different ones in. That's a number eight. This is a quarter inch, I believe, quarter and so on. Um, these are not cheap. They're about $30 each. And I, like I said, I purchased this for about $60. It included uh, four collets, and I had to purchase a new collet, a quarter inch, which was not included with this from, uh, I think I chose McMaster Car, that they had the better price, but it was still about $30. So I was pretty happy. This is a pretty good deal. Um, so what we're going to do today is... Um, tap some holes, like I said, in some aluminum. Um, but first I want to talk a little bit about some of the specifics behind the equipment. Um, as you can see, this one has a two Morris taper shank. There are other sizes and shapes available. I chose this because the uh, column of my drill supports the two Morris taper. Um, when you go to put a tap in here, you cannot use a typical um, hand tap. This is a gun tap which shoots the chip forward. You can also use a a spiral tap flute like this which pulls the chip out backwards. Um, I used to get the two confused until I remembered that um, the, the name gun tap or spiral point tap makes sense because a gun tap shoots the chip forward. That works fine in this part because it has a through hole. If you were using this to tap a blind hole, you'd want to use the spiral flute uh, so that it would pull the chip out. Um, but basically, anytime you're using this type of equipment, you can forget about your hand taps. Those are no good anymore. Those are the types where you need to turn a quarter turn and then back it out. Um, the other thing you need to pay attention to is the rigidity of your drill. This is an inexpensive Asian import drill, but um, it will work because I've fasten down my part securely inside a jeweler's vise and then the vise is secured to a little XY table, I'll talk about that in a second, and the XY table itself is supported well down to the uh, plate of the drill. So this part is not moving at all. That's really important because when the tapping head reverses it's going to try to lift the part and everything else out with it. Even a heavy vise that's not fixtured down is going to lift up, start moving, and you definitely could uh, damage your part and worse off you could injure yourself. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and take my Albrecht keyless chuck out and slip in my uh, tapping head. I will say that if you do this a lot, tapping holes a lot, which you may do if you find uh, it's worth the uh, investment in a tapping head, 
go ahead and buy a second drill. I would if I had room for one. The drill itself is only a couple hundred of dollars and you're putting a tool in it which is worth significantly more than that and uh, you know frankly swapping them is inconvenient and you run the risk of dropping your chuck or dropping the tapping head um, if you do this a lot. So rather than fumble around with it I would recommend just getting a second setup if this is something you do a lot. But I'm going to go ahead and set my tapping out head. Be right back. Okay, I've got my tapping head in the drill press. Um, another, um, you know, point worth mentioning and a potential disadvantage is that you take up a tremendous amount of your Z height of your drill press with the tapping head. It in itself is about six inches, and then you've got a two-inch tap. Um, I'm using the XY table, which I sacrificed another five inches or so for. But the reason that's worth it to me is that you need to have your part. Uh, securely clamped down. There's just no two ways about it. And what the XY table allows me to do is keep the part clamped down and move it around it to line up or indicate to my next hole. If you didn't have this, you would have to unclamp the part and reclamp it and hope that you were accurate enough or close enough to continue uh, continue working. So worth it for me, um, but certainly worth noting if you're looking to uh, for a drill press to dedicate towards a tapping head. Also, a uh, safety reminder to make sure that you include the um, bar here this, and leave it rest against your column or your mill. This prevents the body of the uh, tapping head from spinning around while you're... You also need to make sure that your uh, drill RPM is set to the appropriate range. Most tapping heads have a limit on the maximum RPM. I've got mine set at 820 right now, which should be fine. So I've got my hole lined up. Let's turn it on. I will go ahead and uh, tap the hole, and as soon as I lift up on the uh, on the quill, it will reverse itself and come back up. All right, let's take a look. A little bit hard to see. Let me uh, switch. The All right, it might be a little bit hard to tell, but the uh, it tapped very nice, very clean, as you can see very quick. Um, there's a bit of chip thrown down underneath it, but that's okay. That's what the gun tap does. I've got plenty of clearance. So let's uh, go ahead and set back up and uh, do the next two. All right, here we go. All right, that's it. Let's take a look at uh, the threads. Look great. I grabbed a uh, button head scap screw and it threads in uh, very, very well, nice and tight. Um, as you can see, there's chips underneath it, and uh, but otherwise looks great. Um, I just want to emphasize: you need to have your part clamped down and fastened down when that uh, head pulls up. It pulls up with quite a bit of force, and you you can't hold it by hand. So make sure you're secured and. Uh, Enjoy. It's a great tool, very uh, powerful, and hopefully it'll save me a lot of time when I've got a lot of holes to tap.